come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie review and talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela, Holly, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. What happened to our movie tonight? Uh, that's a good question, Sean. Actually, I was looking. I'm like, what What year was this? I think it was, was 1972. Say, Are we going 1970? I should know this. The music sounds 72-ish. 72. Straight out of Dracula, AD 1972. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, what have you done to Solange? Ooh. Directed by? Massimo Dalamano. No, Dalmano. is that right? Dal, Dal. Wow. Dalamano. I was right. Dalamano. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Have we uh, seen Massimo. anything that Massimo Dallamano has done before? Yes. Oh. Uh, he was the director of photography for Sergio Leone, and he did both a uh, few dollars more, a uh, fistful of dollars and a few dollars more. Uh, oh, I see the connection okay. now to okay. our yes. uh, composer. Our composer. Yeah, yes. Ennio Morricone, Ennio Morricone. Did, the, yes. did the music to the this. great Ennio Morricone. Yes. Yeah, Good but music. Ennio Morricone did the music to a lot of uh, Giallo movies. Um, This is a Giallo movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because he also did um, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. You know what I was going to throw it out there at some point. Everyone get your bingo cards (laughs) out. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Uh, And Dalamano also, he did, um, I mean, he directed some other stuff, but uh, this is part of a thematic trilogy mm. as we are told in the back of the arrow video box uh the school girls in peril uh which also included what have you done to our daughters yeah oh. and i apologize Jesus. i can't remember the last one but he wrote it then he died in uh, 1978 so never something got, like that so somebody else completed never, yes Ooh, who it's like a Steve Clark situation, <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, so the themes of this movie spread across two other ones. That's sorry, right. Yeah. Spread across. Yeah. Um, so, Colin. So what happened to what? Solange? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> what did they what do to Solange? What did they do to Solange? Why? Yes. We'll never know what happened in that elevator at the Met Gala, right? We'll never know why she beat the shit out of Jay-Z. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Seriously, do you guys just, ever wonder about that? just came out that? bewildered. I do you guys ever wonder about I that? absolutely Because it's been like a decade that. and we still don't know. We still don't know. Yeah. And like... I don't even. There, you couldn't even, even know what you're talking that. about. Like right. a, I assume it's Solange Knowles. Yes, yeah, she bit the good shit job. out of Jay Z in an elevator at the Met Gala, and there's like video footage of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Beyonce's just standing there, like smirking with her arms arms crossed, while she just beats the shit. Out of oh. And they like they put out a statement when it happened, right? Like I think Jay Z like, comes out of the elevator bewildered. Yeah, and it's pretty <laughs> really interesting to see. We've never found out what I went mean, down I, in the elevator. Rumors, she she probably smacked the shit out of him for cheating on Beyonce. Yeah, but like, but it's just. Beyonce and Jay Z are so image conscious, <laughs> and their image is so well controlled that for something like this to slip through and like there be in indisputable video evidence of it is oh, they probably wild. They're in a private elevator, uh, yeah. Or and, and, and I don't know just the fact that like they never we don't know like what no did audio. he do to Solange? Yeah. What did he do to Solange? Yeah. It's yeah. gotta be that he cheated on Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. and that's yeah. his her yeah. sister. Yeah. Oh yeah, she yeah. she yeah. slapped yeah. the shit out of him. Yeah. But like, what caused it like to come to a head at the elevator at the Met Gala? You know, like maybe she was there. Oh yeah, the, oh. the, the other, other woman. woman. Oh. Yeah. Maybe. Oh. See, where's my ten part Netflix docu series right. on this? We right? need the right. guest list from that night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give it to me, and I'll red string the shit out of it, and well, I'll figure that, it out. I mean, that's amazing. We're only like five minutes in, and you have figured out what they did to Salon. <laughs> I know. No, we've talked about the only, only other Salon that we know. Yeah, I was like, that's the only other Salon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, question, you were, yeah, you were going to. Well, I was going to ask, wh- 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 why this movie? What? What do you? What is this movie? Why? Why did you bring this tonight? <laughs> okay, I so I mean, yeah, I was like, are we getting right into that? Because that's a big question. Okay, yeah. so this is part of our Giallo series. Our, uh, our, <laughs> our, that yours, I'm dragging yours, you along. Yours. Uh, yours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So this is, uh, so, uh, okay, so I have to assume that for some of you, this is the <laughs> first time a uh, uh, listen. So 
we've been we've covered a bunch of Dario Argento movies, and then uh, this year I was like, okay, well, let's go off brand, right? Mm. Let's, uh, so we watched uh, mm-hmm. Torso. 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 Oh, that's right. I had the voice. Yeah, you did. Torso. You did. Yeah. Torso um, a good time. And then we went back in time and we watched oh. like the first real Giallo. Well, the the first colored Giallo movie, the one that kind of codified yeah. everything. Mario Bava. Uh, Mario Bava's Blood and Black Lace. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so then I was like, okay. So there, okay. I'll tell you. Here's what it is. So you're gonna you're gonna have heard some of this stuff before, but I'm gonna expand upon it. So for those of you, okay. So for you, those of you who are turning in for the first time, right? The the giallo is a Italian (laughs) genre that was inspired by these uh, yellow. Which is the word giallo in, yes. in yep, Italian? Spell giallo for the listeners if they don't know. G I A L L O. Giallo. Use it in a sentence. No, I'm just kidding. G- <laughs> the, the color of the books was giallo yeah. in color. Um, published by a company called Mondadori. Mondadori published books that were mystery thrillers, crime thrillers. And they were written by a guy named, a lot of them were written by a guy named Edgar Wallace. We talked about him a little bit on the Blood and Black Lace mm-hmm. episode. Now we'll talk about him a little more. He is a <laughs> prolific author. Mm. I think he wrote somewhere in the neighborhood of 170 novels and 900 and some short stories in his Jeez. career. We would probably Literally know all him. he did with his life was write. He was a prolific writer. At some point, somebody joked that half the books written in the UK were written by Edgar Wallace. Huh. Uh, Good for him. And he also uh, uh, wrote the first draft of King Kong, right? So he's yeah. the guy. He was commissioned to write King Kong, and so he wrote King Kong. You King write Kong. everything, right? So this. that's probably what he's best known for. Okay. But he wrote all these crimes. What time, what time frame are we looking at? For when did this happen? When were these published? Uh, they were published. This had to be like 60s, the twenties, the twenties, thirties. I would say I think that he was a contemporary of Agatha Christie. Okay. So Agatha Christie novels were also giallos in in Italy. So these kind of like suspense who done it, you know. But hers were more. You know, um, what would you call them? Uh, like stuffier? No, because I mean, Agatha Christie's novels are pretty good. You know, yeah. as far as like, but they're they have more of like a, a not a salacious. Victoria, those, there you go. Okay, yeah. yeah, they're more highbrow than yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Edgar Wallace's were more. I think he was actually, from what I was reading, the first guy to write novels where police were the protagonists. Like they were actually mm. the, the detectives solving cases. Right. That's what this movie is, and. So there was a German company called Rialto Pictures, and they started making movies. I think in between 1959 and 1972, they made 32 Edgar Wallace adaptions, Jesus. adaptations. And so these uh, became so popular in Germany that they had their own uh, 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 genre title, which Holly is going to tell us what it is. Wait, what? What? The cream. The cre- how, how do you yeah. say it? The, oh, the, the word we were trying to figure K-R-I-M-I. out. K R I M I. Oh, it was um um. Is it? <laughs> I practiced this. I got damn it! I practiced it. <laughs> I didn't even know. It was like um. Uh, creamy. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah. 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 Creamy. Yeah. Yeah. Creamy. Which is basically the German crime <laughs> crime thrillers, right? Mm-hmm. Those, we're German. We have to make it sound appealing. Yeah. Creamy. Those films basically are. You know, I think, uh, you know, you can't ignore the influence of Alfred Hitchcock, who's obviously mm. working during this time. But I think those German thrillers were basically, those were the direct antecedents to the Jallo. Yeah. And the Jallo is the direct antecedent to the slasher, the American slasher yeah. movie, which is where we're tracing this lineage. So we have the yellow creamy slasher. Yep. Well, the creamy yellow slasher. Creamy. Creamy. Yep. Creamy yellow slasher, which Ew. is Cream. what? Write that down. <laughs> Copyright Saturday Night Freak Show uh, uh, 2023. Do not write that down. I want no part of that. No, come on. I want no part of that. We just that. name it that. People are like, yeah. what? And then we make our own shallow and call nope. it that. That'd be great. No part of that one. Yep. Now, it's not credited at the beginning of this movie, but apparently this is a loose adaptation of an Edgar Wallace story called The Clue of the New Pin. Uh, okay. But, Interesting that you use loose. Yeah. <laughs> I tried looking up like, well, what's the plot? 
of the curse of the new pin yeah. or the, the clue of the blue pin new pin clue and new i pin. could not get like a good you know and again i didn't dig deep enough i guess enough time, enough time. You couldn't find an adequate synopsis yeah because i'm like this doesn't sound at all like the movie that or the story that we're we're watching so um there was a film That's adaptation of the book and then apparently like the, the british uh made a series of Edgar Wallace mysteries and they adapted his stories. So, so I think that? that's why I chose this movie as a historical focal point to me yeah. in the evolution so of the... It's not quite as translated as, like, say, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to modern Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch. Not quite as fluid with right. a transition there. Well, that's the thing that, you know, I'm look, look, looking over all the titles of Edgar Wallace mysteries, and I'm like, I don't recognize any of these. And I mean, I'm not a Should big reader, but I was like, I don't, you know, none of the stories you figure, right? For somebody who wrote this much, I mean, you know, uh, Agatha Christie, you know, novels and right. stories, right? And you know, Arthur Conan Doyle right. stories, you'd you be able to identify them. But yeah, you'd think you'd know an Edgar Wallace story if you heard the title. But I was like, you know, I mean, it's like the. But I think I think it's what Michaela was saying. He's not as highbrow as the other ones. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Did maybe they changed the titles on, on when they adapted and all this. Stuff. Oh yeah, they did. You know, uh, I mean, well, like yeah. it, they've been adapted as other stuff, you sure. know, over the years. But uh, and some of them are direct, you know, uh, titles. But like, yeah. like in your in your like. We're going to get into the plot of this movie, but in the synopsis that you found, was it like anything remotely about, no. you know, killings of <laughs> nope. underage girls? No. And, oh, <laughs> there you go. No. Yeah. But I'm assuming there's there are blue pins in this movie and uh, the, the title that's, is the, okay. the, the transferred the over. Yeah. That's the link. Pins. So maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, this movie is probably also um, it, it became kind of famous over the years because it has Camille keaton in it um in horror circles obviously she's the girl from i spit on your grave so and she's buster keaton's like granddaughter oh yeah yeah and this was her first movie wow and she didn't say a word in it she nope. plays the titular solange <laughs> so there you go and she would become fitting that she's a silent character yeah yeah no kidding <laughs> Just like Granddad. Yeah. Just like Grand. Yeah. See, me. Oh, was that like part of that? There yeah. we go. Bravo. Yeah. Yeah. So she become famous a couple of years later when she well she married. What is it, uh, I can't remember how to pronounce his name, but Merrick Zick. What's the director of I know or uh, I spit on your grave? But anyway, she oh, married him. Yeah, I can't remember. And his name. then they made yeah. that movie, and then it was like banned everywhere, and was like one of the you know. Uh, became a firestorm and i don't think she really i mean she did have roles and stuff and she reprised her role i think like a couple of years ago and i spit on your grave too yep. really you know mm -hmm. that he uh made i thought it was a movie i recently took to disc replay and let go because i was like am i ever gonna watch i spit on your grave again <laughs> no no probably not so i spit on your grave i've thought about bringing it to the show mm -hmm. over the years there's a couple of them you know yeah. you're like okay if you're gonna go all right. the way you're gonna go with these mm -hmm. movies and it's one of those that I actually had like a lot of apprehension to even watching it. You know, mm -hmm. its reputation Same. kind of preceded it. Yeah. And then when I watched it, I'm like, okay, it's not as it, it wasn't as horrible as an experience because it is still a movie. Yeah, it's nothing right, like right. New York Strangler, whatever that movie is. Um, oh, the New York Ripper. The New yeah. York Ripper. Nothing. Yeah, it's not, it's not as bad as that. Don't bring that movie. Well, that might have been the next one on the list, but because uh, <laughs> we got to bring Lucio Fulci into the fold uh. with his uh, take on. On Jala movie, he did Ooh, a couple. It might of be them. a little too close to this one. <laughs> yeah. um, I need like, a breather, Colin. <laughs> that's kind of how I feel about the the Last House on the Left movies too. I took those to disagree because I was like, definitely never watching those yeah. again. Those are both movies. Here, I brought, are a, brutal. I brought a bag of trauma movies original. for you to resell right? to the yeah. public. Here you go. Well, yeah. well, there was a point in time where like I was like that edgy kid that was like, I want to own all the most fucked up movies ever, you know, and like that was, I had them all, and then I was like, I watched them all, and I was like. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good on yeah. This. But yeah. like, it, it, like, have you guys seen the remake of Last House in Love? Because like, it's yeah. pretty brutal it's still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't know, I remember, yeah, Tony Goldwyn's in yeah. that one. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it was yeah. pretty good, except they it had is. like this tacked on ending that yeah. like betrayed the whole movie. Yeah. Um, Not my jam. Yeah, no, <laughs> se the 70s, those movies of like the 70s, their brutality is kind of, it's this really raw, uh, like unfiltered. Gritty. It feels yeah. like, yeah, like look at human depravity, like yeah. the human animal just being an animal yeah. you know um mm -hmm. yeah 
Straw Dogs is like that too. Yeah, and then kind of, you know, it's like, so I guess, you know, when you're younger, you go like, I'm going to seek out the most extreme thing yep. to see if I can take it. I mean, the, the <laughs> ads for those movies were all like, you know, it's only a movie, only yeah. a movie. Only can you take, you know, Last House on the Left or whatever. Yep. <laughs> And then later on, you're like, meh, okay, I did it, and I don't need to. <laughs> yep. I don't need yeah, to you're just like, I don't know what that feels like. List. I'm yep. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but that's not this movie. No. Uh, we watched uh, well. What Have You Done to Solange? Yes. Mm. Um, which came in the middle of the Jalo cycle. It was very popular from about 1971 or 1973. Kind of like, as we said, the American slasher movies mm -hmm. were popular from 1980 to 82. Mm -hmm. You know, it was basically 81 to 82. Um, and they were spurred on by the success of The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. <laughs> Ding, 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 That's ding, ding. two. Yep. <laughs> the Dario Argento movie that really lit the fuse in uh, 1971, 1970, 1971. Even though we said Mario Bava has already kind of set the template 10 years before that. Right. Um, okay. So this movie mm. is a German and Italian co-production that would, of course, make sense if they're adapting an Edgar Wallace story. So two of the actors in this movie have been in Edgar Wallace adaptations that's in what I figured. German. Um, is it the the woman? Yes. Okay. Hilda, that's what I figured. The wife. Yeah, the wife. Hilda. She's German? <gasps> no way. I figured that if she's in this, and then whatever, everything that you've said, I figured like she's got to come from something. Yep. And the police inspector. They're, okay. So they would be both known to German audiences of the, the creamy, the creamy movies. Creamy. <laughs> <laughs> and Fabio Testi, who is our lead, who looks like Sean Connery, uh mm -hmm. yes sean connery jesus yeah. yeah sean connery and jesus he would be known to audiences of italian movies because he was actually in a lucio fulci movie called four is it the four horsemen or four of the apocalypse which i still haven't seen it's a western it sounds like too short mm -hmm. a title yeah. i'm interested he was in yeah. contamination yeah. i want to say and uh he apparently had affairs with like every like ursula andrus and oh. that is shocking edvige fennec who tall still man looks like run. jesus yeah um. Yeah, and he was he's still I think working today. Wow. So good good on uh, Fabio you start Fabio you Testi. Them, Sean? No. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm still alive though. So. <laughs> <laughs> I just Ernesto that out. Gastaldi. Gastaldi yeah. has not gotten me yet. Author of many jalos. Not this one. Not this one. Uh, is out hunting for Sean. Um. No, he sends assassins. <laughs> All right, so what is uh, what is this movie about? How do we get into it? What what's the what's the setup? It's, to it's, it's been days. I have to remember. <laughs> uh. So we we start with uh, a couple in a rowboat floating down oh, yeah. the Thames, and yeah. they're um, making love in the, well, in the afternoon light. They're trying yeah. to make love. Yeah, he's trying to make love with her in the afternoon light. Um, she's a tweed jacket, which is important. No, it's a sweater. Tweet sweater. Yeah, it's a it's very a sweater. It's a very uh, academic looking sweater. Yes, yes it yes. is. Turtleneck, I think. Yep, uh, yeah. And very fuzzy. It's a cardigan. Cardigan. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. there you go. Mm -hmm. um, and their lovemaking is interrupted because the girl sees from the bank a flash of a knife, a flash of a blade, and a half naked girl running. Mm hmm. That's, That'll catch your yeah. attention. Mm -hmm. And of course, this angers our. Professor, you always coming with some she sort always of excuse. has excuses. Mm -hmm. Always well, has excuses, Elizabeth. God yeah, damn it! There's a lot of like, uh, uh, well, uh, well. So there's a flash of a knife, but mm -hmm. it, uh, explicitly, what do we see? Right. So, um, oh god, I hate this. Um, <laughs> a, so, a, a stabbing. So we, yeah, we see as as they're as they're um, you know in the boat. She sees like kind of the corner of her eye. The camera view that we get is a girl's legs spread apart and a blade being thrust in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yes. This, we are shown at least four Many or times. five Many times, yeah. times in the course of the movie as people flash back to it. And uh, Yeah, and, Elizabeth and has the recollection a few times within the movie, um, almost immediately yeah. after this point. So we see it a few times. Mm -hmm. It's like, do they think we don't remember? Because that's something you don't forget. Yeah, it's memorable. Yeah. yeah, it seems like they're going for shock. Uh, was the impression? I mean, just from the, the, I mean, that type of, you know, crime is like holy fucking yep. shit. Yeah. Yep. And uh, they actually do show the aftermath. Um, there are shots of uh, these victims because this is what the killer is doing, right? Yes. And there's shots of these victims with the knife still protruding uh, from them, and it's like, wow, this is uh, some. Uh, they must pay these girls. 
a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing they paid them very little. Yeah. Based right? on the time and everything. It was art but back his... then in the 70s. I don't sure. know. Uh, this is so... his MO. This yeah. is how he kills his Well, most of his victims, we'll say. Yeah. So this make a statement. is kind of, well, okay, but that goes to, to motive of who our killer is. So Indeed. we're introduced to this guy. We don't know at the beginning that he's a professor. That's kind of revealed within like the first five minutes. And I thought mm-hmm. that was kind of like a shock. Because we're trying to guess as he goes about his day before it is revealed. Because he, I mean, he drives up on a crime scene and just walks up to a dead body. Yep. At a certain point, so we're like, is he an officer? Mm-hmm. Uh mm-hmm. Is he Jesus? Because that kept coming back. Is and you know, and then he finally makes his way to um, the uh, prep school. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we knew it wasn't Jesus when he was yelling at her for not having sex with him. <laughs> well, okay, well that's what they want. I'm to just think. saying. Yeah, it's just what they wrote. <laughs> Let me ask you this, and I don't know if this is too early to get into this. Did your allegiances change during the course of this movie? Your impression of some of the characters over the course of the movie, or did you lock on to you know like have an opinion of them and that stayed that way the whole way through it? I mean, I thought there was going to be well, I thought there was going to be a switch at some point. So one character, I was just like, I don't trust you, and I'm going to continue to not trust you. But then we went so long past the part. Where that character would be like revealed as the killer, then I'm like, okay, I guess this is what they're doing now. I yeah. expected more double crosses. Yeah, I guess, kinda. You know? Like it felt but, like it, and yeah. then it turned into uh, uh, more of a police investigation yeah. in that second right. part. Yeah, of that. it really did. Um, That's that was the second movie I was referencing before we got on because it felt like we had a move part of a movie, and then we had the same characters, but like we. Decided to branch off in an alternate timeline. Yeah, it to investigate. started as a giallo and became a police procedural. Yeah, yeah. so it More became so a, cre- a creamy. It, 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 it <laughs> right, became yeah. a creamy. It does. Yeah. There is like yeah, because I guess there's a narrative that seems to be taking shape that you're right. you're kind of following, and then it's no longer the narrative, right? Because we're following. We've got the prof- the professor. He's uh, an, an Italian gym instructor at a uh, or physics physical education instructor. No, they- uh, a gymnastics. Uh, gymnastics. gymnastics gymnastics instructor. What, what, what are they? What is gymnastics? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think he's basically an Italian teacher and a gym teacher. Okay. Yeah, essentially. He yeah, te- yeah. He's like the teacher that also teaches women's yeah. volleyball. Just, just <laughs> listener at home, keep track of like um things that might alert you to someone being a pedophile. So teacher, yeah, gym teacher, no, yeah. Catholic school, yeah, yep. And, uh, things are not looking good here. <laughs> yeah, no. and he has. What the staff refer to as an informal relationship, relationship with, one with students. his students. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they're not even like, they're not, not only are they not denying it, but they're also like clearly okay with it. They're like, they're yeah, like, that's what he does. Yeah, your informal relationship might come in handy right about now. Well, I don't know if that is, so I, I don't know how to read that, I guess, because, you know, you try to, you, you know. It's I think like, it comes down to him being just less strict with them, like. Because they say in the dialogue that he always takes sides with them against the dean. Yes. So it's like he's friendly with them, which is, he's you know. He's the cool teacher. He's the cool right. teacher. Which is, I think, but that's the level they look down upon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't necessarily think he's having relationships with them. Yeah. Right. I don't think that guy who says that line actually thinks he's sleeping with students. Right. You know, uh, and later on, there is a character who knows that he's sleeping with a student and is like, okay, I disapprove, but I'm not going to tell anybody. I thought that was the same character. No, it was the what? I think it was. Wait, wait who did what? What was the first one? Uh, the character in the office who said, you know, who was like, you can probably, you can, or you can finally put your informal relationship the with the students to. I thought that was the dean. It's the same guy. Yeah. No, the guy who approached him later was, I think, one of the open, suspects. Blip, 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 blip. Yeah. Um, the right. If it's I remember, it's hard. Right it's hard okay. because in these movies, they they don't say names or the names really. don't yeah. stick. They the do, yeah. but Never. you can't remember. The, yeah. yeah. Never because when they ring a doorbell the with a guy. name on it later, I'm like, I don't know who the fuck that name is yeah, 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 until yeah. they show the guy. I'm telling you, it's the same guy. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, I'll go with it because I don't know. I can't the, tell you different. It's the dean. It's he's like the head professor. Okay, I thought it was our eventual suspect. It uh, is. Or, or, that's what no, she said. No, the dean. That's not the dean though. He that guy's another prof. He's another professor. He is another professor. Yeah. The dean is a... Okay, well, he's not the dean, but it's still the same guy. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, So we also find out, and see, this is, I don't know, for some reason I thought it was a university, so I thought these were college-age girls. Incorrect, Colin. (laughs) Yeah, because the dialogue says that they're 18 years old, and one of them, I think, is, yeah, 16 years old. She says, it's my last year. 
And later on, it says she was 18. Yep. So technically an adult, but probably should still be considered a child. Yes. So. Yeah. Because in London, when you say college, that usually means prep school, which usually means high school. If you say university, mm-hmm. that yeah. is college age. So we note this for later. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> stick a pin in that. Stick, stick a literal pin from this yeah. movie into that. <laughs> okay, so he is having an affair with one of his students. Yes. Um, the relationship is set up. They are, the, they are the couple in the rowboat. Yes, mm-hmm. and because of that fact, and because she was witnessed something that she uh, like a, a jalo trope is you saw something but you can never clearly I can't recover recall it. completely. Yep, yeah. yeah. and never. later on you recall a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and then that leads to the identification of your killer. This movie doesn't quite go that way because right. the second movie starts right when we should be at that point. Right, we get to that point, <laughs> and then we're like, more movie. Yeah, because uh, that uh, character ends up biting the dust. And then you're like, well, what are we going to do? I mean, this has changed the whole dynamic of the movie. I thought that's where we were going, that she would eventually, you know, identify this is who the killer is. So I feel like it should be noted that we're like an hour into this movie before we even find out there's a Solange. Yeah, Yeah. we forgot about Solange. (laughs) (laughs) I like that, though. You didn't like that? That it was like, oh. Oh, that's right. The title of the movie is What Have You Done to Solange? And this is the first time it's an hour in before her name even comes yeah. up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm still trying to grapple with them. Like, oh, if that was a good thing or not, if <laughs> it being an hour into the movie. Yeah. Did, does it. Does um, it catch you off guard? Yes. Does, yeah. it, does it rev you back up for the rest of the movie? You're like, oh, Solange, we're here. This is what yeah, we're Yeah, but here then for. we're in the second movie where yeah. we're right. going to find out what happened mm-hmm. to Solange. So the first half of the movie. All right, so this is basically the dynamic. And you correct me if I'm wrong, they're setting up. The teacher has had a, a, an illicit affair. She witnessed a murder. Uh, they can't report it because that would reveal the affair. Yes. He is married to a German teacher at the school. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they don't get along. She's uh, portrayed as a kind of a cold, you know, they keep on referring to her, her German-ness. Mm-hmm. As I like, know I'm German, so I'm very cold. <laughs> yeah, I think she, she says, says it, it herself. In the cold dialogue. and hideous. And she comes across very matronly, you mm-hmm. said, uh, with her hair. Tight bun. Yeah. And she, of course, suspects that he's been cheating on her. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of a dynamic. And then there is the like. I, I mean, just I assume that part of the reason that she has that severe look about her is because she yes. is a teacher at a Catholic girl school. Yeah. Like yeah. she has to look that way. She yeah. has to look that way. And the so. attitude is all because of him. Yeah. And what she suspects him of doing. Yeah. I guess that's what I'm saying about my changing allegiances. I mean, like in the beginning, oh, yeah. I was kind of like, this guy's a scumbag. And I, I, now where that doesn't completely Go leave. Away. Yeah. The movie does something that's trying to absolve him of super scumminess yes uh when it's revealed eventually that this girl that he's been seeing is a virgin he's still trying but she's saying mm-hmm. no yeah but she's still a virgin so they he hasn't actually technically betrayed his wife mm. <laughs> that's what they're going for and the girl has not betrayed god the, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah 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 yes so i guess it's so okay point- so you were you're saying that your allegiance to him changes yeah, and a little to bit. her. Yeah, yeah, and to her. Although like, that's the one I was shaky on, because yeah. I'm like, is this part of the movie throwing us off, or did she really See, come back on board? this is funny to me, but I think it's probably because you're guys. Maybe. <laughs> Most likely. I was, like, okay. I was like, my allegiance towards the wife changes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At first, I'm like, yeah, she's really shrill. Like, she's really hardcore and then later on i'm like you know what she's pretty dope she, yeah. like yeah. she's right she's right. like sticking by her man and yeah, she's like but loyal is that a good thing but i never bad thing because I, I, I had never I had, stick with him I'd well depends on how you well <laughs> right. it changes how you feel about him yeah and so and, how do you and my opinion of him never changes okay, okay. I, I did i guess have some sympathies for him as the man uh you know uh uh wrongly accused of like, a my crime only, my only sympathy is a person being accused of murder yeah. that they yeah. didn't commit yeah i will agree yes. with you there but yeah. that's where it ends this guy goes out of his way to put himself in like the line of fire as far as being assaulted. he does no, he's like, not helping himself at all no he's going out he's like He's going around just touching murder weapons as he finds them and acting like I like how he, he held it up in a profile. He's like, yeah, 
showing up at crime scenes and lurking in the background right with photos like it's like that that scene <laughs> that scene oh when God. his wife throws the paper at him and it's like a picture of him at the crime scene is hilarious <laughs> <laughs> i'm just standing in really the tree you can completely see him yeah. yeah that was great it's like they weren't even taking a picture of the crime scene they were taking a picture yes. of this guy there's yeah. like no tree. doubt that it's him yeah <laughs> that's funny yeah She's got him dead to rights. Oh, my car really broke does. down. And that's why I went, you know, so the police suspect him because he was obviously there. Because he's in every situation. And he yeah, lied about him to be a suspect. It. Yeah, and he like, lied about it. Things. He dropped a pen yeah. near the crime scene. Which mm-hmm. has his fingerprints on it. Yeah. And so they track it back to him. And so it's like the noose is tightening. And mm-hmm. so he eventually does kind of like, okay. I was having an affair, you know, and mm-hmm. so, <laughs> but nobody saw anything. She saw something, a shadow, a knife. Um, Another girl is murdered, and I guess this is what also puts him under suspicion is because they're girls that are in his class. I guess they're girls that are in all well, yeah, these. Yeah, because there's like 12 girls in this whole school. At least in, in second form, uh, yeah, which we're which to is take is the, grade. the uh, upper grade level. Uh, sorry, yes. we're, we, don't, we don't have the same uh, grade distinctions here in the U.S. Grade nine. Um, so... This is also the 70s, so it might be different now. That's right. right? True. The systems may have changed. And we do get, throughout the beginning of the movie, the, uh, the not the not the perp walk, but the uh, the the rogues gallery of these are our potential suspects, mm-hmm. right? We're introduced to oh, yeah. the the priest. Uh, the, uh, he's, the priest's mute sidekick. Yep, because he talks to somebody. There's there's several uh, professors that were introduced to in this. Who are uh, all creepy. Yes. Yes. Intentionally, I assume. I probably. Oh, yeah. The thing that the movie doesn't do, though, is it doesn't really flesh any of them out. So you're like, you never would understand, like, why any of them would have a motive. Because I guess that's yeah. the thing that you're looking for if you're trying to solve this mystery is, like, who has the motive? We know that there's a black gloved killer out there who apparently, as we uh, find out over time, is dressed as a priest and has a beard, mm-hmm. which then later where it's like, well, we know he's wearing a fake beard mm. and he makes phone calls to his victims, basically telling them he's somebody else. Like, you got to come. I'm so and so's dad. You got to come meet me somewhere. Uh, and um, he drives a black car, which is, I think. As I was trying to figure out, like, well, how did he find out where Elizabeth was? Well, he followed her there and saw her go into mm-hmm. the love nest apartment that the mm-hmm. uh, professor the love rents out. Posters With, of naked women. On yeah. The, uh, the 70s. <laughs> it's like a frat boy moved out. And yeah. He's like, yeah and he's airbnb being and he's just like, you stay in my place. That's what I was going to say. Like, if you're someone that has stuff like that on your walls and you invite people over and act like it's no big a deal... Just know that everyone who sees that knows that, like, okay, that's what he's jerking off to. Like, that's what they're thinking when they see that and they come into your house. So just right. know that that's the message you're putting out there. Yeah. And not, like, literally anyone that comes into your house is going to think that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's kind of weird, like, in the 70s. And I only know this because through movies. Obviously, mm-hmm. I was uh, too young to actually see that. Because most of the stuff that I saw in the 80s was, like, you know, straight out of porno mags right. up right. on people's walls. Mm-hmm. But in the 70s, like... They did have like nudes mm-hmm. as, you know, like, I don't know if uh, Playboy uh, Centerfold qualified to write as fine art to go on your wall. Right. But that's kind of what it looks like that they have in here. I'd say it's fine art. Um, right. And you just frame them. I mean, that's what they're, you know. <laughs> yes, but it does, that doesn't. Did you not hear what I just said, Colin? It's still, people are going to be like, okay, so he lays on the couch and looks at this and jerks off. That's what they're going to think looking at it. So as long as you're okay with putting that message out there, just know that that's what comes with it. Oh, and everyone's not just and... like, that's your parents are going to think that. Literally, oh, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That is going yeah, to yeah. think that. So <laughs> that's why you put it in the garage. <laughs> the parents yeah, never go. Like that that's belong right. in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. That makes it better somehow. All around, right. uh, yeah, around tools and. <laughs> And and smells of gasoline. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys are Mad. so simple. <laughs> <laughs> Just like as I don't oh know how God. one room makes it better than the other, but okay, yeah. <laughs> We're simple creatures, yeah. Holly. Yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, that just tells me you go out to the garage to jerk off. Then, so that that's also five the times a day. Yeah. yeah. So we all motivation <laughs> for doing all that sawing in the garage. No, okay. So it's cold in the garage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's garbage. So there's <laughs> there is a second victim. Actually, I don't know much about her. She was uh, lured to a car and then dragged off, and she gets the same treatment, the knife between the legs. Mm -hmm. There's a scene, the police in this movie. uh, Suck. Okay. The one lead detective I thought was going to melt down into 
uh, Leslie Nielsen type role. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where one of just like, I picked the wrong day to stop. Who's the lead, glue? Who's the lead character in this movie? Who's the what? Who's the lead character in this movie? I still say it's what's his name? The professor. Fabio Jesus. Tessi. It's yeah. A, okay. Yeah. Because yeah, the, so. the detective has a lot of screen time he and does. actually does, he in does. some ways, moves the plot along. Yeah. Yes. They're both kind of eventually conducting parallel investigations. The amateur sleuth and the professional sleuth. He's yes. with New Scotland Yard. And uh, I got the feeling it sometimes feels like he's new to the job and taking over these guys because he's always kind of like, you that's not screw up this you know thing assignment that we're you know we're trying well to he get does get into there are a few situations where the police do let him down incredibly so he's yeah. getting a little frustrated with them it right, seems like right. so he does get sort of an attitude yeah um and the and the the policemen are, are very much like yes yes hello especially the tall one who just yeah. shows up around corners mm-hmm. when he's called it's yeah. pretty fun yeah they dropped the ball <laughs> they, yes well so they're uh this is hard to dive into. There's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts going on. A lot, here. Yeah, a lot of moving parts. A lot yeah. of. I mean, there is just leisurely picnic scenes in this where there. There's a lot of discussion of police work, and uh, we. I'm no murders for a while. That's kind of the problem with this movie. Is it's mostly discussion. Period. Well, I think yeah, that's why we get to the, when we get discussion. into the second movie of this, it turns into a lot more discussion, a yeah. lot of discussion, a lot of talking in this last half. Because it's. Uh, yeah, I, I assume you know. I don't know. Is that like when, when you when you take out? Uh, I think because in that second part we've taken out everybody who could, who we started off really believing was a suspect or part of this. The professor, I think we've proven that. Um, well, wait, he okay. hasn't killed anybody. So maybe then we should just get to the second part. What in your so what what ends? See, you know, the first half of the movie, and then how does everything change for the second half? <sighs> there's, there's. I think a, Elizabeth's death. Okay. Is the start of the second movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Because just before that, we're getting a lot of we're focusing on the wife Hilda a lot, which her um um I think you two were talking about her being a suspect and the more mm-hmm. you said the more I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah. that makes sense." Because yeah. well, why wouldn't it? She's uh killing the girls who she thinks her husband is mm-hmm. having an affair with. Right. She's acting it, almost as if like if I kill all of them, I'll have them back to myself. Mm-hmm. Right. She has this very she sees a very emotional looks on her face that kind of lead to that. Mm-hmm. And it feels like at a certain point in the movie, we're building up to that, if not that reveal, a reveal mm-hmm. in those moments okay. where she's at emotionally. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I think it's that Elizabeth dies. And because he's such a sad sack at the, because she died, she kind of comforts him in that way. And it changes it. That's when we get the change of the Hill to the wife character. Yeah. And because she is not, the prime suspect to me anymore. And I think kind of the movie yeah. felt that way. No, that's, that's the point where I'm just like, yeah, I don't think it's her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when you don't think it's her, that's when it kind of switches to like, Oh, because then they team up Hilda and her husband to kind of track the yeah. killer. Yeah. I loved this about this movie. This is one of the things I actually like, cause it was, I couldn't enjoy it because I thought it was a trick. Oh no. I would have I, I liked, <laughs> I would, I liked it more if I had believed that, she was innocent because for a long time <laughs> the thought the thought that she was guilty stayed with me. I'm like, okay, are they going to do a switch here or something? Like, what's going on? Uh, and then they just kept going and going. And the farther along in the second movie we got, I'm like, okay, well, she didn't do it. So now they're a team, and and we get into more investigations rather than action. Yeah, I guess I liked it because it was unexpected. I figured Definitely. it was going to be more one note. It's like you know he's having an affair, you know, so mm-hmm. she's like, yeah, you're out the door, but yeah. it's like I mean. It seemed like she didn't want to leave him, but like, you know, he's going to leave her. And so that's the end of the relationship. Yeah. Right. But then uh, the girl he's having an affair with is murdered in the bathtub. Yes. She's not sexually assaulted. And we find out why later, mm-hmm. I think. why. Yeah. Um, but she's drowned in a bathtub. And then, yeah, there's this kind of Hilda like softens up to him. Yeah. And we find out, I think out that you know the, the 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 murdered girl is still a virgin, so yeah. she's like, okay, I can get my husband back. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is a good message, but I liked it well, as a character. Yeah, I, as far as like a character arc, I thought it was very interesting. Yeah, um, I liked the dynamic because she's because I don't think she's. Is I think it's true what you said. Like at the beginning of the movie, she's like, "My marriage is over. Fuck it." Like yeah. she's just like, you don't. Even, he tries to like say, "Oh, I have to leave." She's like, "Don't even make up excuses. Just go." Like you don't have to tell me that shit. But then later on, I think it's even more so that 
she's like obviously she still loves her husband she's mm. always loved him and it's at the point where she was like i know he's not a murderer and yeah. that's when she's like i'm standing by him because i know he's not a murderer yeah. and then within that you know elizabeth's death and everything she's like well maybe there is a chance i can get him back but i think the main thing isn't that like oh he didn't have sex with her so we can be together i think it's more like i'm standing by him because he's not a killer yeah I think which i found right. that interesting yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, yeah, it's an interesting dynamic, I guess, yeah. that maybe I haven't seen before, or it's like, you know, you're like, have I seen, like, that's a, yeah. an interesting way to go, and then it suddenly makes the, the movie interesting, as it heads into, like, then it's like all the characters rearrange and change. It is, mm-hmm. it's a rearrangement of characters and uh, switching of focus, uh, again, because we go to the, her classmates are yeah. more of a focus yeah. on yeah. this part of the movie, yeah. and becomes more about them and what their and whole backstory is. we bring in new characters. <laughs> right, right, it really, it feels right. like we bring in new characters at this point, and we're focusing on different people, that's where it feels like a switch. Yeah. Okay, so now we're, I mean, obviously, uh, the professor and his wife and the inspector are still trying to figure out, like, who killed these girls, mm-hmm. and their investigation is leading them to it's a priest with a with a beard or a fake beard. Yes, but that's really dead hair under her finger. All they have, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and they keep bringing witnesses in. Maybe this is where you're saying it's like it, it feels like we're seeing the same scene a lot. They're going to uh, the forensic guy who's saying like, yeah, it could be this. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I uh, love that. It's like forensics. he calls his science man. He's like, do you think it could be this? He's like, well, I don't see why not. Yeah, it could be anything. It could be chocolate milk raining from the skies. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> it's just, he's just kind of flipping about his job. He's science like, science is whatever we want it to be. Good yeah. to me. Another thing I was not expecting in the yeah. second movie was milk. Yeah, oh, oh so my god. Yeah. What oh, yeah. is this scene? What is this whole <laughs> scene at all? So the I, investigation I was really shown, it was just like <laughs> talk about it. new characters, new locations, yeah. new. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, because the the uh somehow the idea is brought up this that This is where we've just learned about Solange as yes, well. Yes, yeah. he learns that the, the girls t- there's like there's four or five girls in his class, right? Who we've seen throughout the entire movie and we've seen them kind of you know, sharing looks and, you know, mm-hmm. all this stuff like at the the, the funeral even and yeah. Yeah. all this other notes. stuff and yeah. sharing notes. And so then it becomes like we actually get scenes with them where we're focused on them. But we find out that they once had a friend named Solange and he's like, well, I got to find this Solange that could find out, you know, it's like either she's going to be a victim or she knows something that's going on and that'll clue us into the, the motive. Mm-hmm. And so that leads him to... To <laughs> randomly laying in a park and Solange comes upon him? No, no, no. Before that, <laughs> okay. uh, to the, the photo shoot. Yeah, uh, the photo shoot uh, on the milk. boat. Yes, with Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> yeah, and there's a woman who is naked but like has full body makeup to look like a corpse. She's I think she's made to look like milk. <laughs> she's yeah, she's, I think she's the human she's embodiment of milk. Like some sort of white paint. Yeah, yeah. but yes. she looks yeah. dead. I, like, but like her, yeah, her lips and eyes are like dark, like kind of like yeah, like yeah. corpse look. It's and very weird. She answers the door on the boat completely naked. In that, like this is totally normal. And then it's she, art. the sixties, nudity yeah. is art. <laughs> and then she's like laying down on this photo shoot set with bottles of like room temperature milk, mm, and milk. that. That's what they're doing. Hot room room temperature milk. Well, I mean, it's, you know, they're on a boat. Glass milk bottles, like just sitting there. I assume the room temperature. He's a photographer, this guy. It looks like It's not like it was a frosted a bottle or anything. It it wasn't sweating. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) uh, Okay, so I enjoyed this scene just from, well, I mean. Okay, okay, okay. (laughs) The naked corpse girl, cross count. For the... Like okay, at she's this really point, alive. it's fine. Yeah, at this point in the movie, they were like, "Okay, we've seen like a bunch of it's, it's all starting to kind of look the same. Why don't we have a naked girl <laughs> photo shoot? We'll, we'll paint her white, and then we'll do it on a boat, so you'll have a completely different kind of vista. So visually, it mixes things up. Is there a point to doing it on a boat rather than in a uh, art studio or something cool, like that? Man. Who are these people? He. Is uh, so this guy gives the 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 uh, professor the information that this is the, what links them all together. They, it's the orgy parties. Yes, they were all all these girls at this Catholic school are actually part of like the sex club or something. Yeah, and they've all he slept with every single one of them. And they were wild and crazy, and Solange was one of them. 
And because he mentioned Solange, because I think the detective is trying to find out if Elizabeth was part of the group. And he's like, nah, she didn't hang with them. But right. maybe like not after what happened to Solange. Yeah. And he's yes. like, what happened to Solange? Yeah. Who's Solange? Yeah. And, and we're that, like, oh, Solange. He's like, yeah. uh, never mind. I was thinking of someone else. <laughs> yeah. That was, man, that was just some other bird. Yeah. And so then there's a bunch of naked shower scenes. Yep. And a peeper. Now, see, the thing that I... Okay, so here's why I liked the peeper scene was because... <laughs> we know why you liked the no, peeper okay. scene. It, so, but it stop gave... Stop prefacing it with that. Yeah, it gave the at least one of the other teachers, you know, it's like you kind of see something that could possibly make him a murder suspect oh, or yeah. something, you know? Like, that was, I guess, the thing that I found was missing from the other people in the lineup they never like i don't know shit about the priest yeah i don't know shit about the right. other shifty eyed looking guy it's like each one of them needed a scene like this where right. it kind of informed you of like okay they have some kind of psychological bent or something that would possibly make them uh a, a suspect yeah. otherwise it's just like you keep showing me these faces but they there's never a reason to really right suspect them other than yeah. like you said they have faces that look like suspects right. each one of them this is the only guy that they kind of draw out and go okay he has you're, you're, they're like you're too creepy not to to ignore we yeah. have to put you in something being more creepy yeah and he really is he's always the that's guy good. who is uh you know like that's just immoral in every scene that he's in yeah. and it turns out that he's a peeper that's a character, a little bit of character information, yes. right? Which you don't get from the other ones. That's why I like what they're going for in that scene. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, he looks like a creepier um, Woods. What's his name? Um, oh, James Woods. James Woods. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's very true. Uh, so, they eventually. Keep creepier. Yes, yeah, creepier. Yeah, creepier yeah, exactly. James Woods. I was like, mm, that's saying something. Yeah. yeah. There are messages passed back and forth at a funeral, and eventually mm. one of the girls decides to inform the teacher that if you really want to find out what's going on here, you have to talk to Ruth. Mar. Yep. Ruth. Ruth. And we're like, who the fuck is Ruth? And so he has Amateur to find midwife. out who. Yeah. Okay. So now we actually find out what happened to Solange because um, I think. Yeah, because one of the bodies was found in front of her house. Yes. In front of her house? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then she also died? Yeah. Because oh. she was like, I don't understand why it happened here. Why did... Uh, that was her. Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, right, Ruth right. Miller, okay. maybe? Or is Ruth that right? Matherson or something, yeah. like, it was something like that. But okay, so that was her standing there going, Hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah, gotcha. so the killer actually takes the body and dumps it off in her front yard. Makes sense. <laughs> Got it. Um, All right, so I guess uh, we get... Oh, no, and okay. he goes there. Okay, so before the, the shocking revelation of what actually happened to Solange, we meet Solange. Mm-hmm. Mm. In the, yeah. in the park. Yeah. She wanders up to the people who are looking for her. Uh, <laughs> it's a weird thing. Like, they're, during the picnic in the dog park, they decide to lay down as they're thinking about things. And then mm -hmm. a woman just kind of walks up with her finger in her mouth looking at, what's his name? Enrico. Fabio, uh, yeah, Enrico. En Enrico. Enrico. Looking at Enrico and then wanders but She knows and who he is. Away. That's the thing. She knows who he is. She went to that school for right, a brief but, time. Right, but did he... I thought she went to a different school, and that's why he didn't recognize her. Right, because she, right, she's, she only, like, she she's aware of who he is, though, because he's, he's been a suspect. Like, he's... But is she aware? Because she only got to the first level that they were talking about, and then there was... She went to a different school. Yeah. I think she still knows who he is. Probably from newspapers yeah. or whatnot, or well, what have you, or dad's talking. She's wandering the park, and then we see, like, somebody, like a nurse trying to track her down. Right, and we hear, oh, Solange. Yeah, come back, Solange. And we're like, oh, this is Solange, like, yeah. suddenly injected into yeah, the, like, the movie. Right, yeah. She, uh, one of the girls gets a phone call that tells her, I think, to meet at a carnival. Mm -hmm. And so she goes with her two friends. Never meet at And carnival. this is not clear so i'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there and you tell me if this is actually true i think in a scene we don't see she does actually tell the police that this is going to happen and so the police stage a sting operation where they get a bunch of plainclothes officers and we're going to stake out this park i mean that would make sense yeah they're prepared what yeah. else explains yeah. them being right there? exactly yeah, yeah. Because he's like, we're going to do it. the greatest uh, trap or set the greatest trap of, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so he's got 
he's got officers dressed as priests. He's got people, guys reading the newspaper, not suspicious at all. <laughs> like when he says hi to the other one. <laughs> yeah, and salutes, salutes him. him. <laughs> Don't salute you, idiot. That's yep. funny. <laughs> uh, and so um, the blonde girl sees Solange on a Ferris wheel and recognizes her and is like, or not Ferris wheel, Marigold. Marigold around. And, you know, is like trying to get her attention. And then she kind of realizes that Solange is off. Yes. Something wrong with Solange. Something's right? been done to Solange. <laughs> yeah. So now she's mute, you know, uh, and but she follows Solange back to a car in the middle of all these police uh, yeah. watching these <laughs> girls, and she, the both of them are abducted. Yeah. They walk, they walk <laughs> right out of the perimeter of where they're doing this thing, and they're taken. Mm-hmm. So that scene to me also plays as like, you weren't really trying there. I mean, like there was no, it was just literally, they walked out of the scene and we're like, Oh no. And then now they're gone. And it it, lip service is played, paid to it by the police inspector. who's like, you guys are all idiots. This (laughs) happened right under your, under your nose. Yeah. He's, he's rubbing his eyes and everything. He's frustrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the killer takes, Okay, so then we meet the the father of the of Solange. It's revealed that the professor that's been talking to Enrico for a lot, who knew Enrico was having relationships with the girls, turns out that he is Solange's father, yeah. which is we don't learn until this moment because they have this movie doesn't give you a chance to solve this until very late in the movie. Yeah, which and I think is probably another why yeah. it feels, yeah, because we're yeah. being why introduced weird. to a bunch of grieving parents, and so he becomes one of the grieving parents yeah. who's like, you know, my daughter's been abducted. I mean, his, I guess but it his is, daughter is Solange and, and maybe his story doesn't make any sense because he's like, they broke in and they broke in through my front door and they broke into the bedroom and they, they took her mm. and you're like, that doesn't sound at all like the MO of like our killer. And like, what's the reason? And so, I mean, I guess it's there, but we're just plowing ahead with the plot. So yeah. you can't really pick up on it. Right. Um, and so anyway, the killer who's, who we don't see, um, you know, uh, takes this blonde uh, girl whose name I can't remember. Brit, Brit, could be Bridget. Brit, no, could yes, be it. Belinda. <sighs> okay, it's something. And Hildy interrogates her. Hildy was the first victim, I think. In the yeah, she's like a Britney or a Brit. She's a Brie something. And interrogates her, and she gives up the story of what. In, they did right in creepy black and white. Yep. So uh, what what happened? Maybe <laughs> I said that. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Just didn't sound familiar enough. Sorry. It could be. But yes, it has given up what was done to Solange. Her friends, uh, because her friends uh, have been going to sex parties or part of that sex club, um, she got pregnant, mm-hmm. and so they take her to again um, Ruth, who is the amateur midwife who performs an abortion on Solange. With by shoving a very long needle yeah in, yep, i'm not area. entirely sure While of this her process classmates friends hold her down you just you scramble i don't know so this is the the basically the coat hanger abortion yeah, basically, this, yeah. it's taking place in the kitchen yeah. it's horrific on yeah. the island Yes, uh, let's not forget while her friends hold her down. Yeah. Like that, like that, we're some, skipping over some major trauma happening here right now. Like, like they, that, like, they force her to do this. Yeah. Yes. Because, I mean, she gets, everyone gets there all smile. They're giggling the entire time they're driving there. Yeah. 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 But there is a, a divide on uh, the girls who want her to do it and who don't want her to do it. And then they just drag yeah. her. I think there. this Elizabeth is why and- Elizabeth is not sexually assaulted in her murder. She still dies because she took her there. Yeah. Right? yeah. She didn't yeah. stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the, again, they do hold her down onto the table. And they're saying shit like her, like, think about this next time you screw, and horrible things. It's, yeah, yeah. brutal. Uh, yeah, she just screams. close your eyes and think about screwing. It'll yeah. be over in a minute, you know, and all that. And then there's the, the, the screaming. Yeah, it's yeah. like this is a horrible, yeah. traumatic. And the midwife is literally like, you deserve this. Yeah. So the idea here, well, I thought, no, I got the impression that the midwife was actually... Well, she was trying to help, but she like doesn't know what the hell she's 
doing or no, she, but she literally said that they're like you yeah, probably she just was being a real bitch yeah her during it yeah. yeah yeah she's awful and this the midwife is uh, uh the blonde girl's maid she's been the blonde girl's maid and that's how she's yeah. like she knows tata knows how to do these things because whatever right that's why tata is also found dead and rico finds her dead in the backyard yeah and the dog clubbed to death stumbling yeah, this is like what was um, that all about that dog had like an unnecessary gore effect too like little, yeah little, yeah there was some like that. didn't like some that. brainage there yeah. this is like what's his name from is it deep red where he just keeps arriving at every crime scene and it's just like how is he not arrested at this yeah. point yeah. he just, just keeps showing up isn't and that everyone the, touching the, everything the, that is like a jalo staple it is. Yeah. <laughs> he's stumbling across crime scenes it's like hey here's the guy yep um so, stop going okay, places so, dude well, just jumping around a little bit but that like bathtub scene where someone gets killed, like being mm. strangled in the bathtub, is that like supposed to be an homage to Blood and Black Lace? Because that is, it is like very similar. Or is it just like such a common giallo thing? It to, seems like it's a common giallo gotcha. thing because I think it's part of it is to get an actress naked in a bathtub, right. and then the killer also strikes at that. Yeah, that's a like okay, so we're but, gonna kill because that's when they're mo- very vulnerable. Yeah, yes, they didn't have showers. In uh, it London, just seems like, so, like they such just, a similar Europe the way does, it was shot and everything. Europe even. does baths a lot. Yeah. They don't do a lot of showers. So it's the equivalent of a shower scene, yeah. I guess, Basically. in the yeah, murder and yeah. shower. Um, you both black gloves getting in there yep. and mm-hmm. killing people. So uh, she must have developed an infection or something. And so this, uh, you know, robbed her of her ability to speak and her mm-hmm. mental capacity. And so this, we find out, made her dad go. A homicidal, and so he is going to kill and punish all of these girls that somehow he knows are all part of this group because mm-hmm. they all identified themselves with a blue pin. When yeah, that pin- well, it's because Janet confessed everything in the confessional, right? Because he was dressed oh, as the yeah, priest, right? There is that whole thing where he's yeah. he's got mm-hmm. the beard on, dressed as the priest. He got them all to confess because he wandered into the other confessional. This is all tidbits of this are all released because the policeman is still wandering around questioning people. So we're getting little bits. Well, could have someone gone into there? It was like, well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> any, technically, anybody could have walked in there. We get and, uh, we get a lot of small details, but nothing that will help us solve it on our own. Right, no. Right. Yeah. Until right. we get to like way down yeah. in the movie. Yeah. Because I mean, it does have a kind of a feeling of at the end, it's like, well, who's the killer? And it's like, oh, let's say Mo. You know, uh, that was an old Simpson joke. I mean, nobody, <laughs> nobody got it. But I mean, it does kind of have that like, it's you. But yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, in the plot, it's like, okay, it makes sense, right? Oh, like, no, it makes sense. Yeah. I got Maybe it. Maybe it's Her not dad an is, exciting ending. Yeah. That's, I think, what's missing because I think so. this ends up. And with, honestly, I get it. <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah. it's an understandable reasoning. Yeah, we get all that. It's just not an exciting reason. And we didn't, I guess, get to know the guy earlier on in the first half of the movie. That this father, he's a different character. Yeah, it's yeah. like he just he's there, but there's no. Again, like I said, there's no real focus put placed on these characters to differentiate them. Mm-hmm. Other than you know, when you look at them physically, they're different. Yeah, and then and even then, they're kind of the same. Yeah, and then I guess, you know, it's like he's built up as a tragic character because it's like his daughter has been abducted as far as we know. But, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, so all of our uh, amateur and uh, the amateur team of husband and wife and the detective arrive at this place. And the clue that leads them to suspect him is that one of the girls had an Italian uh, language book that was for a different grade level. Yeah. She took it to the killer because he on the phone asked her to bring it to her under false pre- or to him under false pretenses and Fabio Testi or Enrico finds that book at the guy's house earlier on when they were there right. to investigate like oh Solange has been abducted how did he and learn then that he remembers it later he's like wait what was she doing with that book and he goes to the other girl's house the book's missing and she should have had it but it's here at his uh, house and what is it doing there and so it's like it has to be him and then the <laughs> so yeah if you're following this <laughs> if you're following this <laughs> and so it's if like ah aha him. it's obviously him I think my favorite part of the scene was they're standing outside the dude's door and he's not home and the cops like well what can I do I don't have a warrant and they're like okay and they turn to walk away and he just like hurls himself through the he door does. he sevens that shit <laughs> that's yeah. pretty great and then he goes yeah, in and he's like, look, there's this book. And then the cop's like, uh, well, you got a point. I guess I better call headquarters. I mean, like this evidence is going to fly. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And then, yeah, then Solange shows up, and uh, she eventually leads uh, uh, our characters to the uh, the, the fake... Uh, the catacomb. The back catacombs of this apartment. Yeah, where he oh. has the disguise, the priest yeah. uh, and beard disguise, and yep. it's like, oh, this is our man. And confronted with this evidence, our killer, Solange's father... Kills one more person. He kills one more person. He pulls a gun... And he shoots, and we think maybe he's killed Enrique, Enrico, but no, he shot himself. Yeah. And this is kind of a not a very exciting ending to the movie. And I would tell you that in the years that have gone by, the ending sometimes eludes me to this movie. Like who did it, and I remember why, but I can't no. remember like what happened to him. I know there was a showdown in a house. <laughs> and then you're like, ah. Uh. Yeah, I remember the cops were there and everybody was there. Like, what happened? Because it's off camera that he kills himself. I think the yeah. irony here is my question to finalize this movie is, well, what the fuck happens to Solange now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Her dad just that, killed that herself. That is the great right? scene. Well, what the fuck happens to Solange now? <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, okay, so I have a question about that. She's seen being chased through the park by a nurse. Yeah. So my impression was she was institutionalized. That's what. It- that's what that felt like. Yeah. But so then... She, well, they, they did say that she had to go to, like, a facility. Yeah. But was she still there? Because he's saying she was abducted from my house. This is his whole ruse yeah. to the police to become not a suspect, right? Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. a victim. I, you know, like, right. my daughter I mean, was It abducted. could be that this is his, like, personal nurse that just takes care of her in the house. Probably. Yeah. That's what I'm guessing. Because they, they said that she, like... They didn't say she was permanently in an institution, just that she had to... She got sick. Yeah. Probably an in-home nurse. Yeah. Okay. Keep, keep so yeah, what is going to happen to Solange now? Because there's like, this... does in, is, is Enrique, what's it, Enrique? Enrico? Enrico. Is he going to adopt her? Like, what's going on here? Did you get that vibe from the last shot of this movie? From well, his well, wife, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's a three shot, right? With... Solange was very, like, touching her shoulder. It's like, will you be my mommy now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, so that's, that's her read. trust. Kind yeah. of, trust yeah. Because, uh, yeah, because the wife, uh, Hilda, she's, like, looking back and forth between Solange and Enrico and kind of like, oh, we I guess can't... we're parents now. Why yeah. have you adopted Solange? <laughs> we can't leave this poor girl. What's going to happen to this poor girl? And uh, I guess we're not going to... And maybe Solange we'll... in the next movie just becomes a, a savant detective. She helps, <laughs> She continues to help find murderers and everything. We'll have to watch. What have you done to our daughters? Is Solange in that? Is that I don't sequel? think so. Damn. It's oh. the semi-sequels they say on the back. Yeah, I think it's thematically related just by having schoolgirls in peril. But I don't think any of the characters... <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> Okay. And don't forget, don't wait for our next movie, School Girls in Peril. Which yeah. I'm sure it's a movie out there. I'm sure it is. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I, think I think we found out what happened to Solange. We found out what her. happened to Solange. You just don't know what happens to her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go around the table. We're going to tell you whether or not you should watch. What have you done to Solange? But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why? Thank you, Igor. What would he, would Igor's movie been be? Who used to be Igor, or how many people make mm. up Igor? <laughs> what have you done with Igor? What have you done with Igor? with Igor? No, no, no. To Whatever Igor. we need a pieces title, something yeah. with pieces yeah. in the title. The all the pieces, of, all the pieces yeah. of Igor. Yeah. yeah, all the pieces of Igor is not a bad. Title. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. For a That's his biography. Yeah. Yeah. All the pieces of Igor. Yeah. Uh, a life story. <laughs> a life's a life's story because he's many people. There you go. All right, well, we should tell people how they can keep Igor gainfully employed here on the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie. Millet Time says, I'm bummed out. I can't watch along to this one without an app subscription. The plot sounds very decent. However, Tubi has its very own Italian horror slash giallo category that can satisfy most cravings, but this will definitely be on the watch list. Um, I think last time we were talking about a service called Canopy yes. with a K, um, uh-huh. which is available through some public libraries. Um and what was it like if you're a, a, a do you have to have a library card like yes. how do you yeah you because it's a login system so you have to be a member of your li- of the library that carries it um gotcha. that also applies to school libraries okay. um if you use your like 
um, university login. You can use it as a resource if your university is associated with it. Yeah, and I'm I'm not saying that what have you done to Solange is on it. I haven't checked. I know there is like a bunch of the Kino Lorber uh, Giallo movies are there. Uh, There's also uh, Hoopla. I guess if you you don't Mm -hmm. have Canopy, Hoopla is another like library. So these are free streaming services that you may have access to Mm -hmm. that do have like a lot of uh, movies. Uh, Michael Whitaker says you guys should make a list of Colin's top 10 Giallo movies and call it Colin's Jello Ten, you know, like oh. like gelatin. Gotcha. <laughs> He's like, you know what? I stand by this. Well, all right, with uh, well with Jello shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jello yeah, shots. Yeah, yeah. yeah Jello yeah. shots. It goes together. Yeah, Colin, could you narrow it down to ten? Michael, I made a top ten. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm gonna go number ten. This oh, okay. is this is no. not official. <laughs> well, when Colin. Picks is yellow. He is. He's like, this is my it. night. This is about me. Uh, well, I was asked directly, so I figured <laughs> no, I'd do no, it. No, I have no problem. All right, unofficially and maybe not in this order, but number 10, the bird with the crystal plumage, probably because <laughs> of its uh, you know, significance. Uh, number nine is the case of the bloody iris. Uh, no one ever mentions that one, but I liked it a lot. Number nine is torso. Number eight is uh, don't torture a duckling. Number Oh, what I missed it. That's number seven. Number six is The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Number five is What Have You Done to Solange. Number four is Blood and Black Lace. Three is Opera. And the top two are probably interchangeable, and they flip depending on what mood I'm in. But I'm going to go with Deep Red at number two and Tenebrae at number nice, one. Nice, nice, nice. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> we're, getting, um, we're getting better at this because I can, I can guess <laughs> most of Colin's movies now. Yes. And uh, we've seen most of them. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's been a it's been a ten year uh, uh, thing. And it's culminating this year. I know you guys are very excited about. It. Um, we'll see how many people actually listen to this episode to figure out if we keep going forward with this because maybe I've tapped it out. Maybe this is it. Once you've hit Edgar Wallace, you might be at like that's as far with I the job that you can go. The bird with the crystal. We're gonna have to right, right, and then like. we're yeah. gonna have to. We're gonna have retire to do it. Bit. Retire. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to retire it. If we ever say, we're gonna have to bleep it out in the show. Yeah, yeah. like yes. that's how that's gotta <laughs> work yeah. we'll for our a, audience. We'll, we'll hang sake. a banner up in retirement of it in the right, basement. Yes. We yep. retire the number <laughs> yep. for yes. Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Yep. It can never be. Its uttered number again. will be whatever episode that is. <laughs> right. so, yeah. We will yeah. literally hang up a Crystal Plumage. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, yep. Um, so we'll well sacrifice bits. a bird. Yes. <laughs> we'll do everything. We'll lay the bit to rest. Yeah. Uh, last week we watched a movie called Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge. Oh, Stephen yes. Helicopter says, stay thirsty, my friend. Uh, indeed. <laughs> yes, 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 indeed. Stay thirsty for more. Uh, Malls. that's a joke. You'll have to listen to that episode to find <laughs> out why. Travis Legler says, Pauly Shore was one of those nineties things that people loved that I never got. I like the movie son-in-law, but I like all the actors besides him. I'm able to tolerate little bits of him in a goofy movie for my kids, but honestly, I never got the appeal. I forgot he was. Yeah, in I've that. never been a Polly Shore Leaning person. Leaning Tower so. of Jesus. Yeah, and didn't we? I don't know if we said he started out as an MTV VJ, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That was what. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Uh, I grew up with him. I always loved. Polly I was gonna say Shore. I've liked him. Yeah, I've always liked him. I knew he was ridiculous, but I, sure. I liked him. Sure, but especially when you're young, those movies were yeah. fun. Yeah, and the one that we ne- I don't think we mentioned. I listened to the episode again. We never <laughs> said it. See no man. No, I, I thought we did. We mentioned it. Yeah, did we? Yeah, okay. We did. Yeah. Uh, That's my favorite one. Oh, there right. you go. That's the best That's one. That's the Pauly Shore movie. Yeah. Weeze the juice. Uh, Joey Blythe says, okay, this is about Phantom of the Mall. Uh, why do you need a bomb when there are just ready-to-go flamethrowers lying around next to propane tanks? And then after yeah. the explosion, the guy goes flying off the balcony in flames, and we look back at the couple, and they silently hold each other with zero reaction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's about it. Yeah. And, it was, uh, and, and it was beautiful. Something else. Yeah. Uh, Pat Hetfield says, for once, I actually watched a movie you're all going to talk about in preparation for your show. Yeah. And I must say, I'm rather pleasantly surprised. It's yeah. not very scary, and it could have used a bit more blood. And the queen mother of all entertaining mall horror movies will, to me, always be Chopping Mall. Mm. But it was entertaining, well acted. I didn't even mind Polly Shore. Plus, it had a cool theme song in the end, although it's <laughs> nothing compared to the theme of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Oh, yeah. Thanks again for helping to make Saturday fun. Thanks, Pat. Mm. Thank you. Any yeah, relation to James? That. That's a question for okay. you, Pat. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Dawn Gilmer yeah, says, it. Uh, <laughs> it was a fabulous episode, gang. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, Thank the you. week before we watched Cellar Dweller, mm-hmm. and yes, Mark Harrison says, when I watched this film, I thought the cast were a bunch of no-name actors, but alas, after doing some research, they've had careers. I was surprised to learn that Brian Robbins, who played Philip, yeah. is now the current president and chief executive officer of Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon. 
the movie. That guy's my boss. boss. Oh my god, <laughs> Sean, you're gonna have to go back and censor that episode. Holy so you shit! Don't get fired. That's funny. <laughs> wow. Okay, that Sean. That guy's one of my boss. Ernesto Gastaldi's not your problem anymore. <laughs> no. Now it's this guy. I gotta worry yeah. about going into work tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to track him down now. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's oh my god, that's crazy. That's my favorite. Wow! Uh, wow! 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 <laughs> Uh, Brian Nielsen says, I can't confirm this, but the monster and cellular dweller looks like it was repurposed for the 1988 alien Sasquatch film Demon Warp, which had effects by John Carl Beekler. I will pray daily to Molag Ball, which I think is an Elder Scrolls <laughs> yes, uh, deity, uh, for that film to show up on the freak show. If you need more convincing, it shares the cabin location with Friday the 13th Part 4, has George Kennedy in a crazy Ralph role, and wastes zero time getting to it. I, yeah. I was going to oh, pick it last oh, week, and then oh I switched to Phantom Warp? of the Mall. Yeah, it's been oh, wow. on my list I was for like, a while. Stay tuned for that yes, one. Yes. Yeah, it's been yeah, I'm, looking at, I'm looking at posters here. We have to watch yeah, Demon Warp. Yeah. Demon Warp. Yeah, I know the poster. Stay tuned. I had no idea. We were it's definitely been on my list for a while, yeah. I figure it isn't Pumpkinhead also use the cabin from Friday the 13th part four? Like that's where the, the biker so. kids stay at? Okay, this is a competition to see who gets to it first because it's now on my list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, well, you have the next pick, so you can it's call it. It's not coming that quick. Right now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, now well, we're going to go. close to Cellar Dweller. We do need some space. Yeah, we need okay. some space. Yeah. All right. Well, now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. What have you done, Solange? Starting with Michaela. You can go first tonight. Okay. What did you think about what they did to Solange? He said, he said, oh, what have they done to Solange? Okay, so I was, I was, I've been listening to a new podcast lately called Girl That's Scary, and they were talking about Giallo <laughs> movies, and they had me crack it up because they were arguing about who slaps around women more, Stephen King or Giallo movies, and mm-hmm. I was like, that is a neck and neck race because That's wow, question. both <laughs> of them ask look for opportunities to slap a hysterical woman, you know, and like. Or strangle them and drag them down a hallway, whatever. But there, it, and I just I love pe- when people point out connections across genres like <laughs> that. It, it, I love it. I li- that's why I listen to podcasts for stuff like that. Um, so I I had that in mind when we were watching it tonight, and now I'm just gonna like giggle to myself anytime some lady gets slapped around in a giallo because I'm gonna be like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like gonna be keeping score versus the. <laughs> what was the score tonight? I there was just the one lady. It wasn't too much like it was either killing or nothing. Mm. There was no in between with this movie, you know. Two, but two slaps. Ah, ah, ah. (laughs) But I, uh, yeah, I'd heard about this movie for a long time because the title to me sounded always more like a black exploitation movie. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what I always assumed it was based on the title. Um, But uh, yeah, it it didn't really work for me. I it felt long and I was bored for a decent amount of it. And it just the way it's edited and the way like Sean was talking about it's like two movies and it just. And it's really tough subject matter and it's tough mm-hmm. stuff, and uh, the journey to get there wasn't worth it. So I'm going to pass on it. I this is definitely of the giallos, Colin. You brought le- really, really recently. This is my least favorite for mm. sure, um, by a lot too, because I really like Torso and I really like Blood <laughs> Black Lace. But those, yeah, go listen to those two episodes because those those are good time. But I'm going to pass on. What have you done to Solange, Sean? What do you think? Uh, what have you done to Solange? Finally, uh, watching the movie behind the name. Um, yeah, it's an, it's a weird movie. Um, because of the tonal shift or the character shift, I think that we have in this, um, uh, it's hard to say if I would recommend it or not because I, I was caught off guard by it. So I'm not, I'm still processing that. I like, there's a lot to like in this movie. I think, um, I, the score I think is great. I love the music. Mm-hmm. For this is very there's especially certain moments are just like I love that I'd love to hear more of that in more current movies. Um, I really like the music to this. There's a lot of creepy parts to it. Um, some uh, there's some funny bits with the police and everything, but ultimately I think it goes on uh, it goes on too long, and I think we could edit this together to make it more of a cohesive movie. I don't know. Maybe it's the storytelling in it. Um, I have nothing against this movie. But I'm not going to recommend it tonight just because I think it does. There's a big lull in the middle of this. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. Because, again, nothing wrong with the movie. But just not not this one. Not this Giallo. So I'm going to pass on what have you done to Solange. Holly. Um, they're more enjoyable. <laughs> the brand name there. ones. They're, yeah, they're they're very, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, we've, we'll, we've, I'm sure there's ones like this lower down that are good as well, but... Uh, I think we're for us, and I think for most people, I think we're getting into the the 
the uh, I don't want to say maybe obscure obscure ones more obscure ones yeah and they don't pack as much punch Holly no I I agree the, um, we've watched much better Jalo movies uh, this one. Uh, yeah, I really didn't like this movie. It's it's far too long. It does get very boring, and just the the subject matter is very heavy. It the you know exploitation movies they have to have a payoff for me to handle some of like the dark matter that's mm. that's uh, portrayed in movies like this. And this doesn't have a good enough payoff. Like I understand later on, like why it's I understand the brutality later. But to me, it, it's still the payoff's not enough. It's just it's a, it's hard to watch those scenes. Um, so definitely not my jam. Um, you know, a lot of times I do enjoy a police procedural. I, I like the detective work. I, I like the mystery aspect. But like we said earlier, this doesn't allow the audience to solve it on our own. It doesn't give us enough. Um, yeah, I, that's another one. I yeah, have a it, with. it's like it's not I like until the, like I think we like to play the game. And it's I don't like think we're going to give you let us do we're going to give you the clues about thirty seconds before we tell you. Right. And it's yeah. like that's Ooh. not enough. Like I like to solve it on my own. I like to be given more. Um, so yeah, I can't say there's really. I I agree. The score is amazing. Ennio Morricone can do no wrong in my opinion. He makes me feel things, and he's brilliant um but honestly like yeah this is probably my least favorite that we've watched it it doesn't do it for me i yeah i don't i think beyond the appreciating the score i didn't really enjoy anything about it so <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of a hard pass for me <laughs> uh, so colin take us home <laughs> uh, well okay so i was uh i think this was one of the first giallo movies that i ever saw i'm not even sure that i was entirely aware of what the genre was it was packaged I believe it was on a DVD. Uh, it might have been from Shriek Show. Oh. That was like part of the Euro Sleaze collection there or something like that, right? <laughs> and you're like, what is this genre that I've never heard of? And so this is definitely a sleazy movie. It's not as sleazy as like New York Ripper comes off to me as <laughs> no, more no, no. That's New York Ripper is more sleazy than this. So there's like, it's like this one has a um more refined and maybe it's because it's you know it's set in a an english catholic school but i mean you're still nearing at school girls and you find out you know that they're under when you find out that they're their school yeah girls. and it has a very i mean the method of murder by you know like knifing these women in the genitals is uh exploitive uh, but it's it grabs your attention, so I guess you remember that you saw it, and that stands out as like, well, that's that movie where because there's a the 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 image that actually stuck with me was the X ray. Uh, oh, yes. Jesus, I forgot about the, the killer X-ray. left the knife in that, there. What, you know? It's like, what happened to my daughter? It's like, come this way, sir. He's like, you... he's like, was she raped? He's like, in a manner of speaking, let me show you. It's like, what? <laughs> and then it's like, the X ray. And it's like, oh, that is more horrifying than anything else. Yeah. It's like, Ugh, bleh. Uh, and I also remembered it for Camille Keaton because I know uh, I, uh, 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 I spent it in your grave yep. and uh, and the revelation about what actually happened to Solange. The. Uh, Plot machinations. Well, I mean, I guess if you look at the broader scope of it, I did kind of really dig that, like, okay, we're in for this. And then when I was kind of getting to the point where it's like, okay, this is going on for a while, then it like completely switched gears and became like the second thing. So I know you're saying it made it feel longer, but to me, it was like that was what re engaged me in the movie. And then you're like, oh, well, now we got to, this is kind of, this whole kind of thing is going on. So that actually worked the opposite. I think with me, it, it got I, me more reinvigorated. And I think that's possible if you watch this more than once. That I was think the, that, well, that was the first time yeah. through it because I think that's why I stuck with it. And then I was like, mm-hmm. oh, you know, and then the arrow video and I like, upgraded, you know, and all that. But uh, so it made an impression, I suppose. Uh, the okay, so but this is you know we're talking about going off brand gel, uh, brand brand name. We're saying is Dario Argento, right? And then I just uh, realized Suspiria was not in your top ten. No, because it's not a giallo. Oh, well, it's yeah. a supernatural yeah. movie, and yeah. so it's a horror movie. You know, a fantasy horror movie. Right. Uh, it lo- it h- employs some of the visual aesthetic of like a Jallo, but it's not a. Uh, we've had this argument before. Yeah, okay. I still think it's Jallo, but whatever. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, 
a lot of Giallo movies. Well, I think, you know, you've Dario Argento, and then probably the second one's going to be Sergio Martino, who did uh, Torso and uh, All the Colors of the Dark and uh, the Strange Voice of Ms. Mrs. Ward. Mm-hmm. Your Vice is a locked room, and only I have the key. You know, those those ones, which are all, I think, better than this one, mm-hmm. probably. Um, but the the plotting of these, because basically, you know, right, if, if you know Agatha Christie or, I suppose, Edgar Wallace, it's like, these are uh, very convoluted mysteries where they are trying to like obscure uh, the 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 final reveal, so it's a shock. But I think that's where this movie falls short is because it doesn't really have like a shock ending. Yeah, it feels like that comes with the scene where we find out that Solange got the you know back alley abortion. That's like yeah. the that's the 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 climax and then everything after that is not as strong as that Mm -hmm. so you're kind of like you know what what happened at the end of that movie yeah you know and it's it's this guy you know he's the killer it's like okay and then he kills himself i mean there's not even a you know uh, a good standoff or you know this whole movie's just a big bummer (laughs) no rocket launchers um yeah but i don't know I, i i really for some reason i found the relationship between uh the professor and his wife like endearing in a way that like I, you know, it's like, cause a lot of these, um, you know, Italian, I've also noticed that Italian giallos and, um, uh, like Japanese sci-fi movies and stuff or Japanese uh, Yakuza movies or whatever. They're always, the characters are always like telling you who they are. Cause I think they know that they're being exported or whatever. It's like some writer wrote a lot mm-hmm. and they don't show, they, they tell like way too much. That's what's happening yeah. here. It's like the guy who's writing it is writing it as a literary thing, and then they just filmed it. You That's know, it's what it like, feels like you need somebody to actually go in there and go like, well, you don't actually have to explain all. You this need a dead body every yeah, ten pages. I mean, yeah, sometimes it comes in handy. Yeah, so I'm always kind of like on the outside of like the inner life of a lot of these characters in in a lot of these, but in this one. I was like, oh, I actually do kind of understand who at least these two people mm. are. The detective is the detective. Yeah. He's the guy who's like, I'm determined to solve this. I don't know why. I don't know what his personal thing is, but at least I got nope, them. And I think that kind of stood out to me. So um, I like their performances. I like the people in it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It. Uh, I would recommend. <laughs> what have you done to Solange? Now, even though I told you what they did to Solange. <laughs> it's no longer a mystery. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, who knows? Maybe the next one will be better. Will there be a next one, Colin? I don't know. We'll find (laughs) out. We may we may take a detour. Who knows? Because now I'm bummed. You know, you guys didn't like this one, so it's like yeah. But again, that that feeling will go away, and you'll be like, bring it back. I gotta. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. So, but at least if you have paid attention to all the ones that we've done so far, you've got like a pretty good little history. This is the understanding that I have anyway of how we got to (laughs) the, the Mount Everest. The, the the American slasher movie. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Creamy. All right. Next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by. Sean. Oh, yeah. What are we watching next week? Next week, we are going to watch the 1998 Denzel Washington thriller, Fallen. Oh, boy. Huh. All right. I don't think I've seen this. <laughs> okay. We haven't? Yeah, I don't think so. Time. I don't think I have. Is, is on, on my side. side. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. So that's next week <laughs> okay, right, right, on right. the Saturday Night Freak Show. And we hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark.